A common way to become a data engineer is not to directly become a junior data engineer. Instead, many people, including myself, first were often a data analyst or data analyst-like position, and eventually we moved laterally into doing data engineering work. In this video, I'll both talk about my experiences as well as how I would now do the exact same thing I did back in the past, but with a little more focus towards data engineering in terms of how I'd become a data engineer from a data analyst position. As a quick recap, for those of you who don't know me, hey there guys, my name is Ben Rogajan, AKA the Seattle Data Guy. I've worked as a data analyst for a few years, but then switched into data engineering and I've been doing it for nearly a decade, working at companies that include startups in the healthcare industry and well, Facebook. Now I focus on data engineering consulting and helping companies set up their data infrastructure so they can find value out of it. But let's dive in how you can become a data engineer if you're a data analyst. So let's go back to about 2014 when I first started in the data world. Again, like most people, uh, data science was my real goal. But I got a job uh, at a hospital working as an analyst, making about $55,000 a year, which at the time felt terrible because a lot of my friends in school were often making double that at their first role. So that alone already made me feel a little bad and I wasn't working in some sort of programming role. You know, a lot of my friends had gotten jobs at Amazon and I never even gotten an interview. Now in this data analyst role, I was working on a lot of solutions that I didn't even realize were somewhat adjacent to data engineering. I was using tools like SSIS, working on data warehouses, building tables, uh, building data sets for financial analysts, and honestly doing a lot of stuff that most data engineers do today. Maybe not at the same scale, but I was doing a lot of these baby projects along the way. And that's one of the things that I usually recommend people do first is, you know, as you're kind of improving your skills, your baseline skills, right? You've got your SQL, maybe you've got some programming skills that you're uh, working on, Python, et cetera. Start looking for little projects at your company that you can start pushing into. In fact, I helped a data analyst at Facebook switch into data engineering after about six months to a year. After partnering with me to do some projects, uh, they were able to kind of, again, trade that into a better position. So that's usually something I recommend. Like you don't have to find a title or a role that exactly covers data engineering. Just start doing the work at the company that you're at. This is usually the easiest first step but you are missing something to get there, which is you might have to improve your skills. Yes, you want to dive into these projects, but you need to be somewhat useful at doing the work that people are asking you to do. So step one before asking to work on some of these projects is to improve your baseline skills. That means improve your SQL and improve your Python or whatever programming language your company works with. But Python is usually a safe bet. These two areas get you started. Now, once you get started, that's when you need to start learning the application of these skills. Uh, this is kind of your developer tree, right? Like there's different paths you could take in terms of skills trees. You could go the data science route and take Python and SQL and focus on analytics and data science and statistics, or you could take SQL and Python and focus on engineering and infrastructure. And that's where you start going down the data engineering route. What does that mean in terms of skills you need to know? Well, you better learn data modeling, data pipelines, the cloud, all of these skills are necessary to go from just being an analyst to a data engineer. You should also improve your depth of knowledge in programming where it shouldn't just be knowing how to automate basic scripts, but you should understand the difference between functional programming and object oriented programming, as well as understanding how distributed systems actually work and process data effectively. No one's saying you have to know everything to this perfect baseline level where you can you know, understand the bits and bytes that are moving underneath the hood, but it's important to kind of understand these big pieces that you're playing around with. How does something like Snowflake versus you know, Hadoop differentiate in terms of how they process massive data sets. What implications does that have in terms of cost? Because again, different tools have different cost implications in terms of how much they'll cost in computes and things of that nature and understanding how you set that data up in terms of their write once, read many times type systems where you can't do a lot of editing or maybe none at all. You need to kind of understand these varying differences. In order to do that, in order to cover these skills, you know, we've covered data modeling, you need to find the right resources. And here's a few. So if you're looking for, let's say data modeling, most people will tell you to start with Kimball and that's a great place to start. Um, there's also the basic data warehousing course on Udemy. And these are things I always recommend people do. One of them is free, one of them is not, but it will get you to at least a baseline understanding of like, what do all these things mean? And the thing is, some of this stuff has changed. You know, if you understand the fact that data modeling and a lot of the stuff we did um, back in the day was due to often limited 
data storage, it's kind of clear why some people are trying to make these even further denormalized data sets where it's like one big table uh, with BigQuery and their whole push. And there's pros to cons to this, and you'll you'll learn about the differences when you're making these different data modeling choices and learning about normalization versus denormalization. But it's good to have a baseline understanding of what you're doing. Once you've done that, you need to understand things like data pipelines, which here's a few different resources you can use, and I'll link them below as well. Um, I put a video out about it, and there's just a ton of content in terms of like what you can do to learn about data pipelines, what they're doing. You know, some people like to call them data workflows. Um, the point is they do the thing that takes data from point A to clean up, to transform, to point B. Um, and then often some other steps afterwards, depending on what you're doing with them. And that's usually the core of most data engineering work is like architecting data sets that then can be used by data scientists and data analysts. The nuances of how we get there is that's all that nitty gritty stuff, you know, things like understanding data processing and how to, you know, like processing large data sets across different regions like the US and EU and what that has to do with security and privacy. And also just in terms of like latency, all of these factors come into play and you'll start to understand them over time, but just getting this baseline understanding of what data pipelines are can then eventually build into these other things. For example, one of the other skills I often recommend people learn is networking because there's so much in terms of getting data from point A to point B that has to do with networking, whether that's dealing with firewalls, whether that's you know dealing with the fact again that data might exist in different uh, networks altogether um, in different subnets, that adds extra layers um, of complication but also the fact that the cloud exists today and how that can sometimes make things easier. Just the other day, I used BigQuery Omni instead of any form of data pipeline just to transfer data from essentially S3 to a table. Again, there are implications there in terms of costs, but there are all of these trade-offs that you'll learn slowly. So you've built your baseline, right? You've built your coding baseline. You've built, hopefully at this point, some understanding of data warehousing, ETL pipelines, the cloud. Um, throughout this whole process, you should be likely using Git to manage all these processes and manage all the code that you're building. All of this is to build up your skill set. This is something I never really did. I tend to prefer writing uh, more than I prefer showing off code. Also, most of my code is in someone else's repository somewhere. But showing off code and building projects is a great way to do so. Uh, I recently wrote an article about seven different project ideas you can look into. These are just examples. I, I think it's a good idea for you to try to figure out how you should build a project. Like you can look at these projects for inspiration on the tools you should use, but overall you need to come up with the actual process, the actual things you need to build. Cause that's to me part of it. It's like, where does data come from? You're gonna learn so much more if you do more than just copy paste other people's projects. And you've got enough of the baseline skills that you can do that. With this firm foundation that you've built, you can now start adding other skills. You don't need to run into all these skills. I think a lot of people make this mistake where they're like, oh, I need to learn everything. I need to learn Docker, I need to learn that. And that can be overwhelming. That can be too much, especially if you're just focusing on you know, your job already as a data analyst and now you're taking on side projects of data engineering work and it's just too much. Focus on building this base. Focus on, on making that as your data analyst. Now, once you've built that up, once you've started to push into this data engineering role, maybe you've even convinced uh, your manager to give you that data engineering role. If not, I'd start looking for interviews and opportunities to do that, which means you also need to start preparing for interviews. Now I've put together an interview guide uh, several times and I can link that below, but overall it's kind of your standard practice, your coding, SQL, data modeling, and uh, ETL design uh, focused interview prep. It's not gonna to be too much more complicated than that. Depending on the company you go for, some are very heavy in terms of like coding focus. Others are really just mostly SQL. But the point is don't wait for a time where you feel like you're now a data engineer. There's no like right time where you're technically now a data engineer. There's no right amount of skills. There's no right amount of tools. Like if you were to wait until you had all the tools that were on any form of data engineering roadmap, <laughs> you know, you'd be 10 years down the line and still not really there. Like everyone's still picking up a lot of these skills along the way. So don't worry too much about that and just start putting out resumes, start networking with people that are in the data engineering space. Maybe start talking to hiring managers, figure out you know what they want. Because making that switch, if you have the right skills, can massively change your financial position. I went from making about 60K uh, to 100K at my next job, and then from 100K to 300K at the next job, and now uh, considerably more consulting. So <laughs> there are massive implications by being a good data engineer and waiting to have the right project can massively hinder that entire process. So don't wait until you feel like, okay, now I'm ready. Just start going into uh, your next role. Start applying again, start networking, start looking for referrals if you've done the interview prep. 
Now, once you get that next role, now you can start working on those next set of skills. You can start looking into learning more about DevOps and Docker, um, maybe some data viz that that's what you want to show and you're not already doing it as a data analyst. You can start understanding things like streaming and learning Kafka and maybe looking at different solutions that can help you stream more efficiently. You can start specializing in what type of data engineering you do. Maybe you're going to be really focused on Airflow or Mage or some of these other tools, but that's when you can start focusing on specialization. You don't need to start focusing on that immediately. Again, it's build the foundation, start that interview prep, get that job, and then start continuing to build because you won't actually know what skills you need until you get that job. I think that's something that you'll end up finding out after a few years. You know, most of us did that um, during the Hadoop era. We spent a ton of time learning everything to do with Hadoop and Flume and Scoop and every other solution that was involved in setting up Hadoop or using uh, Hadoop or interacting with Hadoop. And a lot of that's gone away. So don't focus so much on learning all these tools because you don't even know what your next job requires you to use. For all you know, it just might be Azure Data Factory and you know Snowflake, and that's fine. You don't have to work with Databricks everywhere. You can eventually get there at your next role. Um, most data engineers are pretty capable of learning the next solutions. And yes, sometimes hiring managers can be a little bit stiff and silly, maybe not hiring managers, but the recruiters in terms of what tools you've used, but you'll pick them up along the way. So I focus less on that. But this is kind of how I prioritize things in my mind. It's like, you know, step one, build up your baseline skills. Step two, try to find a, a project internally at your company to work on. Step three, either get a job as a data engineer internally. The problem here is you don't generally get as good of a raise or step, or the other kind of side here is look for a data engineering role externally and make sure you're prepping for interviews and so on and so forth. And then you can start adding more specialization to your skill set and doing more projects and sharing all of your new skills with other people like I do on LinkedIn and YouTube. And that's kind of a pretty straightforward path that I follow. It's kind of what I did, but this I think would fast track it a little more. I didn't have a clear path. I barely knew what a data engineer was when I got my first <laughs> DE role. I was just like, okay, I'm automating data processes. That's, I think I might've even put down automation engineer or something on my resume. Cause I was like automating a lot of processes. I'm like, okay, I think that's kind of a role. I don't know. So I didn't even really fully understand the term data engineer. Again, you don't need to wait until you're 100% confident. Start applying as soon as you have got at least a baseline set of skills. And even once you get those interviews, it's gonna take another three months to like get hired. So don't feel like you have to be perfect. Just start applying and start getting ready as soon as you've built that base. I hope that gives you guys some confidence on your route to becoming a data engineer, your data analyst, or if you're just starting in the data field and you're looking at data analysts or you're not sure how to become a data engineer, that's kind of the route. Get a data analyst role, work it for six months, start improving your skill set, do those data engineering projects internally, another six months, and now you've got a year of experience, maybe a year and a half. And then from there you can start applying and it should hopefully be a little bit easier. With it guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Thanks and goodbye all.